two, two, two. Well, I might have to change my position. Hey, hey, Instagram. It's me, T, from the Patterson's Taking the Train to Tibet. In the, the weekend is here. Well, it's Friday. Friday meaning that it's, uh, I've named it. It's uh, what, what I learned this weekday. <laughs> As you know, we have 17 tirades a week, right? On, uh, on Fridays is, uh, well, let me, let me start with Saturday. Saturday, the last day of the week, whatever it is. Uh, Saturdays is like whatever comes into my head, you know what I mean? Sundays is supposed to be like I read something, then maybe I get this, I don't know, some some happens on Sunday. Mondays is me day, I'm not talking about me. Tuesdays is uh, U.S. days, right? Thursdays is world days, right? International days. Th- uh, did I say Wednesday? That was Wednesdays. Thursdays is audio drama day. Oh boy, those are good days. And Fridays, I just named it, is uh, uh, what happened to get my attention week, uh, 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 what happened to get my attention during the weekday. Uh, look, I'll figure, I, I'll get a cute little name sooner or later. I'll work on it the rest of the month. This month being October. October, as you may or may not know, according to numerology, is a preview month of what happens next year. So you put stuff that you need to do just this month or you see it happen this month, more than likely next year, those things will be uh, amplified or those things will be worked on, whatever it is. Couple of things this week that caught my attention. First thing, uh, I I, uh, I, uh, I I hesitate to use the word religiously. Let's just say uh, I uh, uh, always I always check on uh, uh, Dr. Joe Horn, like the the Actors News Network, and wherever they post, you know, every week get, get, his, get his perspective on the thing. Because well, I like Joe Horn, you know. Look. In, in the 80s, Gerald Horn uh, was, was closely associated with, uh, well, closely, was hanging out at WBA or, or most of the time. That's where, well, a lot of the time, right? And that's where I was, that's where I was based. And, uh, you know, a friend of Samori Marks and blah, blah, blah. So I met, Gerald, you know, Gerald, 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 right? But he's an intellectual, a real intellectual. Not like me. You know, let me figure all that stuff. A real intellectual, right? Okay. So I check on him all the time, right? And uh, sometimes I tell you, well, uh, uh, who else do I check on all the time? There's, there's a few other people I check on. Well, <laughs> Corey Holcomb, every week I get my Corey Holcomb. That's my dose of, of reality, of certain reality, a certain segment of reality, right? 5150. Don't worry about him either. That's a, it's, not a, it's not a guilty pleasure. It's not a distraction. It's a necessity, right? So just like I go from, the, the, I guess, in some people's world, the highs of high with Joe Horn, and some people say Corey is a low. No. They're, 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 they're both the highs of highs in their thingy, right? Okay. So, uh, but 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 in the Actors News Network, uh, very often one of one of the programs uh, that comes out of WKPFK, which is KPFK. See, so when you hear the, when you hear the uh, what do you call that the um, the call letters for a radio station, the, the, like I was at WBAI. Well, a sister station, is, one of the sister stations to WBAI in New York is a KPFK in San Francisco. I'm sorry, I'm messing up. KPFK in Los Angeles, right? We also have, a, well, we meaning Pacifica Network has the KPFA, which was the first Pacifica station in, um, in Berkeley and in San Francisco and whatever have you. Uh, and then you have, uh, uh, what's, I keep on forgetting that the Houston station, K, whatever Houston station is, K, K whoever, right? <laughs> I don't know why people forget the Houston station. I used to know them so well. Uh, I, I've never been there, so maybe that's what it is. Uh, WPFW, which is in Washington, D.C., and uh, I was there for for a bit when I was recovering, whatever. The peace watch there. Anyway, when you hear W, that means it's basically, uh, let's call it east of the Mississippi River. When you hear K, that means it's west of the Mississippi River. Because back in the day, World War II, whatever, when it was back in the day, when they started this whole thing, uh, uh, when they give the call letters, it's mainly for, for air traffic and stuff like that. So if you hear a W, then you know you was east of the Mississippi. You hear the K, it was west. And there's, I think there's a, one exception in the east and one exception in the west where they hit the... Look, that's, it's radio history. And I'm a radio man. Maybe I should put it that way. But one of the things, uh, when I listen to Joe, uh, uh, the one the, the station of KPFK, uh, doesn't matter. They, they do this uh, weekly program, and they always... Uh, they always uh, play uh, Mumia Abu Jamal uh, commentary. Oh, by the way, uh, those commentaries, uh, prison radio commentaries, they were actually started out of KPFA, 
selling stamps or well, selling Berkeley, right from uh, for, for uh, well, Noel Hanahan started recording him and put it up and da da da. And they haven't mentioned her name, so maybe I don't know what uh, I should research, but I'm not going to do it. Anyway, I just noticed for maybe he has been doing it for a while, but I just noticed at the end of his commentary, he says, "No fear." That is important. No fear. F E A R. No fear. Okay. Now, it, uh, the weird thing is this: I, in growing up, I didn't have fear. I guess it was those 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 two and a half years, whatever I spent in that in that forced situation where I was abused and stuff like that. Not sexually abused, but abused. Me and my brother. Da da da. When I came out of there at six years old, I mean, I think what happened. My my brother. At one point, we were tied up like like cowboys, you know, in, in, in this woman's basement, like because she was using she was using the foster money, whatever, Harry, to pay for a house and whatever. I found out later. I'm not gonna say because then it'll, it'll identify a group, and then you'll have this whole thing about whatever, whatever. But anyway, I thought she was I thought she was a white lady, right? In my in my pain, but but, but my brother who had a vivid, of course, he was older. He had he knew he told me something else. It wasn't a white lady, which is kind of interesting, you know. I'm not going to tell you what, what, what uh, nationality the person was because I don't want to condemn that nationality. And it's kind of interesting because there are other psychological things about that nationality that hit me. Anyway, and so from that one, when I got out of that situation, at, at, I guess I was five and a half, six, six, six years old, uh, because when we was tied up, my brother, I, I guess I was crying, weeping, whatever it is, my brother, because he was, he was tied back to back. And he said, don't worry, he said, uh, don't cry, Anthony. Don't worry. I'll always take care of you. That was, I don't know, it's, it's, things get in your brain and psychologically so, and I stopped crying. And and except for some, you know, accidents or whatever, everyone got cut, uh, I didn't cry. I didn't cry. I, I didn't cry from six years old until, when when did I go to Africa? Uh, when I went to Gory Island, uh, when I had my Gory Island experience, hey, when was that? The 80s, the 90s, the 90s. Uh, yeah, it was the 90s. So I didn't cry from from six years old to 40, 50, whatever, whatever, I don't, whatever years to in my 40s. But then when I went to Gory Island and had that experience, oh, did I weep. I mean, I wept for days. It was an amazing kind of thing, right? And all the other time before that, I did, no, oh, I did cry. I say cry when that, that gut wrenching cry when my grandmother passed, but it was like three months or whatever, some months after my grandmother died. I didn't cry when my grandmother died. Anyway, I said, just to say, so I never had any fear when I was basically most of my adult life. I didn't have fear. And then when I came to Alice, uh, doing some work at, uh, well, doing some postgraduate work at, uh, at uh, University of Fort Hare, um, I noticed for some reason I noticed. I noticed that there was a lot, of, a lot of things that they. When I was doing research, and I, was, da, 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 and I noticed that all of a sudden I came across people had fear. I noticed that everything was about fear. Doing research, it was about fear. And I'm going like, oh, because I, I guess I, I was oblivious to fear. I, I don't know what it was, right? And um, I guess, guess what I'm saying is that. That is true. They think the, the the underlying thing is the the force that be, the power, whatever it is, puts fear into people, and people do are paralyzed because they're fear. They're feared. They're feared. No, they're not feared. They have fear, and it's kind of interesting because, I, I, for some weird reason, even I mean, you know, I have, I, I don't have fear. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. That's why I, things that I do is like. I don't care. And now it gets, it's worse now because now that I'm older, because I didn't have fear before. But now that I'm older, one of the things about being an old person, I think uh, James Moore said this before time, he said, what are they going to do me? I'm an old man. I, da, da, da. I'm going like, I'm an old man. I have no fear. I don't care. Every day, like this day, beautiful day in Cabevels, the sun is shining. I went out for the walk with the dog in the morning. We had a nice little walk, whatever it is. Anything that happens, that anything that happens to me beyond this point, this very point, it's all, or it's all been icing on a cake. Let's put it that way. So anything that happens for, I don't care. I, 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 I seriously don't care. My legacy is 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 is, is, in, is intact because there's people that's, that 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 are doing. I mean, real people that are doing that know what I, what my 
purpose in life was whatever it is they're doing what they do uh, shout out to my peoples at uh, Dumbazo. Uh and, and wherever on the planet whatever I've affected on the planet whatever people I've affected on the planet they're off and running uh, my uh, my spawns <laughs> the people I've spawned they don't know whether they, they, they deal with me or not they don't understand this is a legacy thing my spirit my how you call that my uh, my my lineage it goes beyond uh, uh, children it goes my it will go my grandchildren my great grandchildren will have that spirit that and what that spirit is it's basically uh, 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 evolutionary a, a resistance a uh, we got to deal uh, we will deal with injustices uh, hanging with the downtrodden that's 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 my spirit right there like that hey don't touch that camera doggy dog anyway uh so that that so so so, so when, when mia says no fear I'm like hmm, i need to incorporate this somehow maybe I'll, 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 you know it's a short bar you know no fear um but maybe i'll slip it in somewhere i'll start writing it someplace or, or whatever just, just like when i if you ever get an email from me it says uh i i follow no one and i seek no followers that's a, that's an original you know that's an original term term for me and uh i actually that's true i follow no one meaning no person i mean basically i follow the universe you know i follow love love is god god is love I f that's what I, that's my following right and i seek no followers i don't want i don't need no followers if you can't find it in yourself to do what you're supposed to do, why are you going to look at me to, 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 to follow what I'm doing when I, I've done all the work to get me to do what I'm doing? To, to, and you don't want to follow me. You really don't. I know that they, they have these things, they have followers on the things, whatever. So that's one thing I got this week. The other thing is much more interesting. Talk about no fear. Uh, this morning when I woke up, you know, I turned on the phone, whatever it is, and uh, flagrant the, 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 the podcast with the... The Schultz guy and his crew, you know, the the Indian and the and the and the white boy and, and the black guy, who, well, and the black guy. So that and then 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 I guess Schultz is, well, whatever. So you got two white guys, an Indian, and a black guy. A black guy, he's black American, right? Every once in a while he gets some little zinger in there that makes that makes sense. Anyway, they're interviewing Donald Trump. Okay, you see, I'm talk. Let me put it this way. I've said this for a long time. I'm going to repeat it right now. Donald Trump is smarter than you think. That's all I'm saying. Now, people keep on calling, for instance, people keep on calling, calling Donald Trump a racist. Oh, okay, do, do what you do. Uh, look, let me say this. Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. says, you can't call somebody a racist unless they, call, unless they, they identify themselves as a racist. Think about that. Mr. Neely Fuller Jr., who I appreciate, I, 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 well, should say I follow. I appreciate. I'm an acolyte of Mr. Leo Lily Fuller Jr. That's not following. I just appreciate her, right? He says you can't call somebody racist unless they call themselves a racist. I want you to hold on to that thought. No, hold on. Just let that sink in. Okay. And when Donald Trump was first elected, the first term, one thing I noticed, he went. He, he talked about different groups, but he never ever talked about American Africans, black people, you know, Negroes, you know. He never really, he he never really talked of not his first term. That, that check it out. He never he talked about all other kinds of people. He did. In fact, there was one point that he did where he um, he raided some chicken farm, from chicken, some chicken factory where they make the chickens right, and got rid of the immigrants, and then the black people came and got those jobs. Right? Okay, that's that's one thing. But let me go go back. He said, but all the things he did in the past, right? he wrote this, you know, this big thing for the New York Times and blah, 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 and, and, so, and with the, 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 whatever, the, the, the what do you call that, the, the, the Central Park Five, and, and what, what he did to, well, he didn't put them in jail, he wrote a letter. At the same time, that was happening, real racists, like, you know, the ilk, the uh, Joe Biden ilk, they were passing legislation that was putting pe black people in jail. Those are your racists. So it's weird to me that you would call Donald Trump a racist and not understand that Joe Biden and his ilk, you know, sucked on the teats, was brought up by racists. I, it just blows my mind. I don't. Somebody like 
Like say, what's with it? AOC? AOC when when she first like her district in her district she had Rikers Island was in her district. She ain't did nothing about the Rikers Island. She did nothing about Rikers Island. She that was part of her district in, in Queens or whatever it is. Queens Bronx, Queens Bronx, but it's you know how they gentrify things. And I think they read they read configure her district so this I don't know. I don't pay attention to her. My point is, it did nothing. I don't know how people, anyway, here's the thing. And what I did know is, now don't know, but he did some things like, for, let me put it this way. I grew up in the Patterson Projects, right? The Patterson Projects is like, a, you know, from 100, I guess it's 139th Street, yeah, how, uh, stores, it's like Central Park, it was like, you know, like a, whatever, like a peninsula, right? A, a, a land peninsula, right? And from 139th Street to about 140, I guess you say 143rd Street, say 145th Street, is whatever it is. And then from, then, then then you have whatever you have. And then from 149th Street to about about four blocks, 149th, 150th, to about 143rd Street, 100, I gotta look at the map, 140, about four blocks, there was the Italians had a thing right there. So if I was going to the Millrose, Millrose Projects, we had to do because when my, when my grandmother would put in her numbers, the woman that, that took the numbers was in, was even in Millrose Projects, right? So you can remember, I go, go there, put the number down. So I had to walk past them all the time. That was heavy Italian there. Everybody knew. And so if I'm a black person going through there, you get all kinds of whatever, whatever. Now for me, again, I had no fear, so it didn't bother. <laughs> okay, who you are, I go. <laughs> like that. Say that. Well, there's another incident here, but, but I don't. I, I, whatever. Now you could call them racist, but they were doing their little territorial thing. I guess you know what I mean. Making sure da 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 da. So, so New York had those pockets like that. Now, uh, the the Trump, the, the the Duff man. You know, he grew up in Queens, and w what was his what was his surroundings? He grew up. The mafia raised Donald Trump. Let me repeat that again. The mafia, let me blow my nose with this, get all the, that was his influence. Dun, 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 I'll let that sink in, right? Then he's a businessman in New York, and as you know, they froze black people out all over the place one more time. All over the place. So that was his kind of thing. But all in one, he would be, because he's a businessman, he's slipping and sliding, you know what I mean? When it's advantageous for him to, 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 to get, uh, uh, how do you say, white people to be on his side, he would do something, yeah, and get advantageous for black people. So he's, he's slipping and sliding. He's talking, he, he deal with the black people as far as celebrities go, whatever, he deal with politicians. He's, it's the mafia. The mafia's hands are in everything. Do you understand what it is to be raised by the mafia? <laughs> They're the politicians. They got a judge here. They got the the deed. The holy. He did the high. The wound. The wound. I mean, I guess I guess they weren't really into the civil rights movement, but that's civil rights in the South. The South black power movement. In fact, they they, 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 they they look in the South Bronx. Think about this. The reason why we had the drugs came to the South Bronx and the Lower East Side is because uh, the, the 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 some authority said like if these gangs that were in the South Bronx at this time, because I grew up uh, in the late, in the, in basically in the 50s, my formative years, 50s, 60s, right? And if, and for this thing not happening, I would have probably just been in the gang, but because the gangs, by the time it was time for me to join the gang, the gangs were all doped out. Just heroin, everybody was strung out on heroin. So consequent, not consequently, you know, my energies went to, well, you know, black power movement, you know, like that, you know, the, that's where my energies went. Okay, so, but that 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 that, that, that uh, letting the drugs come to the South Bronx, which is a hub, right, was fueled by somebody made the decision, and since they were in bed with the with the mafia since the since the World War Two, they called on them. Then the police, which is highly, uh, I say, let's call it Italian and uh, not Italian, uh, uh, Irish, which is Irish, Irish, well, those three entities, the politicians, the the police, and the the um, uh, organized crime, we call organized crime. They let the drugs come into the South Bronx to get rid of the gangs, and, and that's what that's what happened. This is documented. You can look it up yourself. 
because you're supposed to be doing your own research anyway. Don't listen to me. So that's so that's how the the, the drugs came in. Hey, so so it's a fact, right? So now, so so now what, what I'm saying. So we, we we have this situation where real people, real forces that that, that go to destroy the, the the community. Those forces get away with stuff because you can look at one person, and say, that person's a racist. When there's somebody who made that decision, like the the, ilk, the the Biden ilk, which was got the prison helping in, and they got the drugs coming in to make sure the prison had, and and and, and the, the three strike people over there in California, all those people get away with all kinds of racist stuff, racist policy. That's it. Donald Trump doesn't do racist policy, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. And one of the things that was funny to me, Donald Trump. Uh, Remember how Donald Trump pardoned Jack Johnson? He gave an official uh, pardon to Jack Johnson. Nobody brings that up. If you want to talk about racist incidents, right? Jack Johnson, another boxer, because of the Man Act, the whole Man Act, they get people on, or that, that 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 they they use to to lock up a lot of peoples wherever they are. That was started by a real racist. We're talking about the FBI. We're talking J. Edgar Hoover, and then real racists. In fact, yeah, that, that, that guy that killed Billy Holiday, the, the, the one that, 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 that during Prohibition, they put him in charge of the Prohibition thing. Prohibition went away, and he lost. He, he was going to lose his job, so they, they had the boogeyman about, about, the, uh, about the drugs. And then, you know, they made, they, they made uh, basically a, a marijuana, a uh, drug kind of thing, right? And, and they sent his, they, they, those goons went after uh, black celebrities, you know, the jazz people, because, well, Whatever, and they're the ones that kill. They're the ones that he's the one that killed Billy Holiday, personal friend of J. Edgar Hoover, and J. Edgar Hoover, who basically was a was a self-hating black homosexual or cross-dresser, whatever you want to call him. Right? He's in charge of everything. He, it's a mess. These are real racists, and nobody says anything. I don't understand it. I really well, I do understand. Anyway, back to Don Trump. He's smart and So he's on flagrant, and what I, and, and, and the, the Indian guy, um, he brought out. He said, "You know, we we've been talking for a while, and we asked you about how what happened with you, but you why you're a good father to to his children, and you kept you you didn't answer like you was a good father. You was pointing to your children. You and if you really check, I wish somebody would. I wish people would stop calling people names and do some real research." You're supposed to be researchers. You're on the internet. You're not supposed to be mouthers. You know, keep on doing uh, what mouthing popular things or slogans stuff like that. You're supposed to be doing your real research. You got the time. You got the time. Do your research. Okay. I'm not saying voting for Donald, voting for Donald Trump. That's not what I'm saying. Me personally, because well, yeah. Let me say real quick. Real quick. Me personally, no, I wouldn't vote for Donald Trump. That has nothing to do because he hasn't said enough about reparations. I'm, I'm, I'm a one issue man, I'm a reparations man, right? Only person, only political party that's on the ballot saying anything reparations is is the Green Party. It's not that Jill Stein said a whole lot about it, but her, her, the guy, but that's another thing I learned as well. Dr. Bush, where? Hey, Butch, brother. Now that brother, he knows. Okay, he could do some real research. He's actually, he's a he's a he's really an academic, right? <laughs> not a fake academic like these people clip print. Not like your Sewells and stuff like that who don't. My point is, plus he hung out in West Africa, so he knows something internationally. So I'm on his side. So if if I was if I could, but I'm not. If I was going to vote, I would I would vote for the Green Party because of reparations in Butch Ware, and what well, well, and then what I would do. Is I would write in someplace rep uh, my uh, I'm on a campaign my my uh, uh, nom de vote uh, nom de something uh, I would write in lineage reparations in some other spot on the ballot just so that that'll be it'll be on the poll on on the it'll be officially recognized lineage reparations write that in but I would go for the Green Party for the platform people want to win or lose I don't know what this I want to win I got I got to be with things on the win I don't know but, and to sit no I'm gonna be, let me leave the those people are, I'm not going to sit out the election. Well, I am going to sit out the election because I'm, I'm, I'm here and I didn't get my out of there. I, I, I may I still have a shot, but I, I don't want to. I want to do what I did, the first Barack Obama thing, which was like, uh, I didn't vote. I decided I didn't put in an absentee ballot because I, I live in Africa. Uh, 
the second uh, Barack Obama thing, I definitely, I did not vote for, I mean, by then the, 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 the cat was out of the bag and we knew what that was about. Anyway, back to the point. But Donald Trump, uh, you know, and p p people ignore, you, they, they, they'll focus on like his business deal, but they don't understand, you don't understand. He, the, his son went to Wharton School, but like, he went to Wharton School. He didn't mention that he went to Wharton. He went to, his son went to Wharton School. So he keeps on mentioning things outside of himself. He doesn't make things personal. You all think he's, pretty, he's a narcissist. Well, I guess he's a narcissist as far as what you, what people projects narcissism. Somehow people project that, but he's really not a narcissist. <laughs> I know narcissists. Believe me, I know narcissists. Anyway, back to the point. So he's smarter than people think, and what. And and, and 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 what he does, he does things for, I guess you would say for his, I won't say his tribe, but if he went to Wharton School, he was surrounded by smart people, well, finance people. So his tribe are the finance, how can we make money? How can we do that? So my thing would, against, not against, but my thing about Donald Trump, would be about, okay, you're going to do the bidding of your peoples, your peoples meaning you're, you're the people you grew up with, you know, organized, whatever. And, and the people you went to school with, meaning, you know, the Wharton kind of people, the finance people, and I don't know who else, you know. But for doing stuff for racists, eh, I guess so, I don't know, you know. But, so, the question is, what are you going to do? Because the other thing I noticed this week, that's my little Donald Trump thing, the other thing I noticed this week is all these people are talking about, they're, they're for this or for that, everybody's actually for Reform in the U.S., like reform in the U.S. is going to, U.S. in the United States, is going to of North America, of the wilderness of North America. Somehow they want to reform it and make it, help it to live, to resuscitate it. Ha, 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 ha. This is our country. Ha, ha, ha. You know? <laughs> sorry. Somehow that's what they want to do. I'm sorry. I think, I think Butch, Butch may have said this. I'm saying this for I don't want to reform the system. I want to tear it down. Down to the and build it back up according to what I my principles according to uh, uh, my code my Neely Fuller Junior code. That's what I. That's my ultimate goal. Get to get rid of the the stuff that 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 that, that the, the U S perpetrates on the world. Now, if you're not in, is anybody understanding what I'm trying to say? I'm saying if you are in this because you want to help the U S to live to continue to continue to do what they do. Well, that's the team you want. You might as well just be on the the, 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 the Trump, uh, who was the other, Harris team. Oh, Harris is the worst. Anyway, oh boy, I really ranted today. I'm sorry. I'm not, actually, I'm not sorry. I do not apologize for my rants, right? I rant seven days a week. This is a rant, okay? Or you call it a rant. I call it, because I, I know big words. I call it a tirade. So my tirade. Let me, let me, let me, let me. Oh, oh, oh well, I want to say one more thing about the Trump and, and the flagrant interview. So he's talking to real people, to comedians and stuff like that. Here's who I would like him to talk to. Now I'm, no, I'm not a big fan of whatever. He needs to talk, have a sit down with Tariq Nasheed. He needs to talk to Tariq. Right? Give two hours to Tariq. You say, well, there's other people. He should talk to the actor. No, they all, no, no. Believe me, I know communications. I know people. I would have him talk to Corey, but that would be out, outrageous. You know, but Tariq has the numbers. He has whatever. So he, he should talk to Tariq. That's what I would, I would like. That's if, if I have to choose a black person. And what about Joe Rogan? No, 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 no. He don't need to talk to Joe Rogan. What needs to happen if if, if 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 the Harris woman keeps on wanting another debate? What what should happen? He said, "Okay, I'll debate you, but here's my moderator. My moderator, and it'll be a two-hour debate. The moderator is going to be Joe Rogan. One moderator, Joe Rogan. Well, what about, you keep on leaving out women. That's right. I'm leaving out women. <laughs> you have your own ideas. You know, you want to get your you want to." You know, I, mean, I could mention Amy or something like that, but because uh, I work with her better than that. But things change all the time. I'm telling you, the black person I would like, 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 like to have uh, to, to, for him to sit down with would be Tariq, that she over there in California, and the uh, the the debate 
if there was to be another debate, which should also include, oh, include the Green Party, the Green Party. The debate would be the three. The three would be, you know, the Green Party. In fact, I would have it. I would have the president and the vice president of each of those. That's hey, Joe. I know people are here on this trip. Joe Rogan. Here's here's what I would. Say. If they came to you, which they probably have, they say, look, I'll, I'll I'll host a debate. But well, here's the thing. It would be. Let's pick a number. I, three is my number. A three-hour debate, and here's who's on the stage. The president and the vice president candidate of the uh, Democrat Party, the president and the vice president candidate of the did I say Democrat, Republican Party, the president and the vice president of the Green Party, all on the stage at the same time. And Joe Rogan would do what he does. That's the kind of debate I want. Of course, you can't do my bit because I'm fearless. And, you know, I'm, a, I'm an audio dramatist. So my thing is a little different. All right? Okay. That's it. Talk to you later. Uh, later meeting, you know, another day. All right? Be well.